Hi, this is Eric Durack and welcome to our third season of Med Health Fit, the show that integrates wellness and healthcare. Well, for the past two seasons, we've talked about integrative medicine, we've talked about sports fitness training, we've talked about general exercise and nutrition. This season, we're going to cut the envelope a little bit. We're going to get a little more into some of the current events in terms of healthcare and medicine in the U.S. And tonight, one of the things that I'm going to talk about is a very hot topic uh, issue, and that's autism. And tonight's uh, episode is also going to be talking about attention deficit disorder. Now, the Centers for Disease Control say that about 1 in 68 children in the United States suffer from autism. Uh, when I was a little kid back in the 60s, uh, 1 in 25,000 children may have suffered from autism. So what we're going to try to do in this episode and some future episodes is we want to really dive into some of the issues that, uh, from a health promotion perspective, might be causing these neurological conditions, these uh, developmental delay conditions. And in future episodes, we want to talk about some real solid solutions because as a person who's looked into the areas of sports medicine, complementary healing, as well as general allopathic medical care, I think that there are a number of, of things that can be tried by patients to improve their health, even if they're diagnosed with a, uh, with a pretty serious and chronic disease. So let's get started on our show tonight in terms of uh, what, uh, what we want to talk about and um, one of the things that I want to um, make a linkage between. So the, the title of tonight's lecture is uh, titled, Harvard Researchers Reveal 10 Toxins That May Be Causing Attention Deficit Disorder, ADHD, and Autism. And they basically say at the rate that these neurodevelopment disorders have been increasing in their diagnosis, um, the average person, the average bystander might assume that they were a contagious type of disease. Um, ADHD is something that is mostly given to students now, a Ritalin and other types of, of, of uh, medications that help calm them. Uh, but for autism right now, uh, there really isn't anything per se that you can give, medically speaking, to a patient, a child, that can really help them with this chronic disease. But let's look into this, um, th th these 10 toxins in tonight's episode from the standpoint of environmental health and safety. Now, uh, some of you know from some of my past episodes that I do work in environmental health and safety uh, at University of California. And one of the things that I have been uh, exposed to from an education standpoint uh, at the university setting is the concept of the MSDS, or the Materials Safety Data Sheet. And there are about 80,000 chemicals that are used in the workplace in the United States today. And some of those we'll be talking about here in tonight's episode. But a potentially harmful chemical that's used in the workplace has what's called an MSDS. It has its own material safety data sheet. Because if I were exposed to a toxin, even something like bleach, which is used in, in almost every home in America, what would I do if I were exposed to it? If I got some in my eye, would I need to rinse it with water? Would I need to go to the emergency room? That's all uh, detailed in the MSDS. So when we talk in tonight's episode about these 10 potentially toxic substances that may be causing disease, we want to go about it from their environmental exposure standpoint. And in a future episode, we'll talk about how we can actually go about the aspect of maybe reversing a disease such as autism in its early stages. So let's get started with tonight's episode. So a, a disorder of neurobehavioral development, such as uh, ADHD and autism, uh, right now affect up to about 10 to 15 percent of all births here in the United States. Uh, the study that was done uh, at Harvard that was uh, published in Lancet Neurology in 2014 correlates these developmental pathologies uh, with chemicals that are found in our homes, they're found in our water, and they're even found in our food. 
Um, and what most people don't understand is that a lot of these toxic chemicals are actually found in the air supply. We breathe them from uh, car exhaust and other types of exhaust all day long. Uh, the researchers in this study state that the neurotoxins contribute to a silent pandemic of neurobehavioral deficits that is eroding the intelligence, it is disrupting behaviors, and is, in, is also damaging entire societies. And we've seen that here in the United States just in my lifetime with the uh, onset of ADHD in the classroom, where uh, in some communities up to 50% of children are on some sort of medication in order to, quote, calm the ADHD. So I don't want to get into any types of medications tonight. I want to stay with this lecture in terms of the, uh, the, the toxins and what their effects might be from an environmental exposure standpoint. Well, let's take a list and let's find these chemicals, most of which are in our daily lives, uh, in order to avoid them uh, in terms of, you know, just spreading the awareness, you know, making you, uh, the viewer of our television show, aware that certain types of, of toxins and what the, the exposure to them over time might lead to. So all of these chemicals that we're going to talk about tonight have an MSDS, which is the Material Safety Data Sheet. Uh, in the workplace, these chemicals are kept under, under close scrutiny. Uh, most environmental uh, workers, uh, you know, who work with, let's say, painters or carpenters who have to use certain types of toxic substances have to know what the MSDS is for all of the chemicals they use, especially a painter, because paints have many different types of chemicals in them, from uh, antifungicides to preservatives, to make sure that the paint on the walls stays there for a long time. In the workplace, these chemicals are kept under lock and key. In your house, they're kept under the kitchen where anyone can get to them, the, uh, you know, underneath the, the kitchen sink. So the first uh, environmental toxin I want to talk about is lead. It's one of the most extensively researched compounds in terms of neurodevelopment that, that's ever been consistently linked to serious deficits, including low uh, IQ scores, and its effects seem to be permanent. And we, I remember when I was an uh, uh, older child, younger teenager in the late 60s, early 70s, when lead paint was really something that was on the news all the time and that kids were eating lead paint and developed almost, uh, in, not instantaneously, but, but in a very acute setting, they developed uh, neurological conditions, uh, whether it was brain development or uh, problems with their limbs, problems with respiration, etc. So lead paint was one of the first things that people noticed the connection between an environmental exposure of a toxin like lead and things that were happening neurologically. So let's look at the MSDS of the toxin lead. It's harmful by inhalation and if it's swallowed. Uh, the danger of, cu of, of cumulative effects, in other words, that if it's done over time, it, things are going to get worse. It may cause harm to unborn children and the possible risk of impaired fertility. It's also dangerous to the environment. So even though uh, you know, you might not be ingesting lead per se. They, lead might be dumped into a, um, uh, a field or something and it may get into a waterway and that lead may make it into your uh, drinking water. The second toxin is methyl mercury. And uh, mercury is an element, uh, but it does affect the neurological development of the, of the fetus and exposure comes uh, in the intake of fish and a lot of fish have high levels of mercury, according to the World Health Organization and to the EPA. So mercury and methylmercury, which is a form of mercury, um, are very highly toxic. And uh, we find a lot of mercury in the oceans now because uh, fish that come from the United States, Japan, uh, many other countries, uh, like salmon, uh, have very high levels of mercury in their system. So we as Americans, even though we're cooking the meat, have a tendency to be eating higher levels of, of mercury over time. So let's look at the MSDS on mercury. Danger, it's a flammable liquid and, 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 and vapor. So it, it's so toxic that it can actually catch on fire. It causes respiratory tract irritation. It may cause allergic skin reaction. It may be fatal if, if it is absorbed through the skin. It may cause kidney damage, central nervous system effects, eye and skin irritation, fetal effects, and the target organs for mercury are the kidneys and the central nervous system. So I remember when I was in elementary school 
and I had biology class, maybe fifth or sixth grade, and, and our biology teacher said, you know, we have mercury here, and you can cut it with uh, a you know, piece of wood, or you can cut it with a knife, but please do not touch mercury. It is a very highly toxic chemical, and you should stay far away from it. So even at an early age, I learned that mercury uh, was not something that you want to really, you know, hang around too long. So now we have mercury in some of our foods. So, you know, vegetarians can say, hey, you know, we don't want to eat this, not because of what we believe about the animals, but we feel that uh, mercury exposure is something that is going to harm us over, you know, many, many years. So eating fish when you're young may actually cause cancers 20, 20 years down the road. Well, let's look at toxin number three. And toxin number three is PCB, or polychlorinated biphenyls. And a lot of people have heard about PCBs uh, in terms of things that are now in exposed in breast milk. Uh, this is a family of chemicals that has routinely been associated with, with a re reduced cognitive function, uh, brain function, uh, in infancy and in childhood. It is often present in foods, particularly in fish again, and it can be passed along in breast milk. So PCBs are in, from infant, from being an infant on, uh, children and infants are exposed to PCBs. So what does the MSDS say about uh, PCBs? Um, an emergency overview. This is one of the few toxins that, that, that I have an MSDS on that actually has uh, health hazards acute and chronic. The eyes, moderately irritating to eye tissue. Skin can be absorbed through the skin and cause uh, potential for uh, a chloracne. Uh, inhalation, probably liver injury, ingestion, slightly toxic and reasonably anticipated to be carcinogenic. So, PCBs taken over time, another type of carcinogen. Let's look at the next one, arsenic. Now you say, well, wait a minute, well, you know, arsenic is a mineral, and although arsenic uh, that you've probably heard your whole life um, is present as a mineral, and some communities may actually have trace amounts of arsenic in drinking water that occurs naturally. And some indigenous tribes may have been um, exposed to arsenic over generations. Well, that may be so from, from naturally occurring. And there's a couple other chemicals on here, or minerals, that uh, people have been exposed to for hundreds, maybe thousands of years due to natural seepage. But when we look at arsenic, when it's absorbed through drinking water, this chemical has been uh, also linked to reduce cognitive function in school children. And many studies from uh, the Moringa milk poisoning incident have linked its neurological disease in adulthood. So um, levels of arsenic that have been found in milk uh, have affected not just children, but they've also affected adults as well. Well, what does the MSDS say for arsenic? Uh, it is potentially acute health effects, very hazardous in case of ingestion or inhalation. Uh, it causes skin irritation, eye irritation. Uh, chronic health effects include carcinogenic. It's a class one carcinogen. It is not, um, the developmental toxicity is not available, but repeated and prolonged exposure to this substance can produce target organ damage. So uh, I, I guess that this episode is not really meant to scare you, but uh, even exposure to small amounts of some of these types of minerals or, or chemicals um, can have long-term effects. So hopefully you can look to see, you know, what, um, you know, uh, are you buying organic milk? Are you buying milk that you can be uh, fairly certain is not uh, have any arsenic contamination in it? So one of the things that we want to discuss in this, in this episode is where might this type of, of occurrence be and how can you, the consumer, avoid as much as possible as many of these types of uh, uh, toxins as possible. All right, we're about halfway through here with a substance called toluene. And when I was in high school, I remember reading the label on a box of cereal. And on that box of cereal, it said that it was that the, um, the bag inside of the box that the cereal came in uh, was coated with both BHA and BHT. Well, the BHT is butylated hydroxytoluene, which is a chemical that is used in the paper to help preserve the cereal as it is stored uh, in the grocery store for a number of days or maybe even a number of weeks. But toluene as a substance, it's actually a solvent. It's, it's like a cleaning solvent. 
And uh, maternal exposure to toluene has been linked to brain development problems and attention death all. So the EPA warns that the highest concentrations of toluene usually occur in indoor air from the use of common household products. Well, what would those be? Paints, paint thinners, adhesives, synthetic fragrances, and nail polish, very high in toluene, as well as cigarette smoke. So don't forget, as a raw material for glue, which many children use for crafts, it's also, these glues are also high in toluene. Um, it's it's uh, released in emissions and it's added to gasoline to increase its octane ratings and the chemical itself affects the central nervous system. So toluene is a very big chemical in terms of its effect on central nervous system disorders and permanent damage. So um, toluene, if you look at not just BHT, but toluene itself in terms of glues and, and other types of household products, read the label. See if you can get some sort of a cleaning solvent that does not have toluene as uh, one of its ingredients. And because in the uh, custodial profession, many companies right now are going into green cleaning products. As a matter of fact, here in Santa Barbara, we have a company right off Turnpike called Big Green, which is a, a green cleaning company. All of the products that they use are environmentally friendly. And you can see it right on their big green trucks. So hopefully one of the, one of the um, uh, elements that they do not use is toluene. Well, let's look at the next one, manganese. Now, wait, I know what you're thinking. Well, manganese, that's also a mineral. Doesn't that occur in rocks? Isn't, isn't manganese a rock? Well, it is. But it's uh, in drinking water in high amounts, all right? So, so manganese can also be dumped, uh, used in chemical processing and dumped in waterways. And one example here was in Bangladesh. The chemical was linked to lower scores in math, diminished intellectual function, and ADHD. So we're not talking about uh, manganese in what we would call naturally occurring amounts. We're talking about manganese in higher amounts. And usually there's a threshold where the higher amount uh, of, of manganese, the lower the test scores and the higher levels of ADHD. So what does the MSDS say on manganese? It's a trace element. It's important for good health, but in very small uh, amounts. Uh, manganese is also used for steel production, and it's found in the exhaust of many types of automobiles. High levels of manganese are shown to directly affect the central nervous system. So you see the theme here with almost every um, chemical or toxin that we've talked about is that over time it has effects on its central nervous system. Ah, number seven, uh, fluoride. Back in season one, I did an entire episode on fluoride. And I don't know if I put the, the, the two together in terms of the, the use of fluoride in water supplies and ADHD. Um, I'm not a fan of fluoridated water supplies because based on what people have been told by their dentist, it, it may help with tooth decay but that's when it's put on the teeth topically. The levels of fluoride that are found in water supplies are actually ingested into the body. So let's look at the MSDS in terms of fluoride as it's ingested, which is not really what it's supposed to be. Fluoride has been the talk of the town for some time now, probably about 25 years. Uh, this one isn't really a mystery because um, it's put in our water supply, uh, usually by municipalities, state government, city governments, etc. Uh, in conjunction with the, the current study from 2014, Harvard University linked fluoride to lower of IQ of children and clearly illustrated the fact that fluoride is detrimental to brain development and can lead to aut autism spectrum disorders and other mental issues. So fluoride is the big one, I think. And what I know from my chemistry series in college is that fluoride or fluorine, the molecule from the periodic table, is called it has the high, highest level of electronegativity as opposed to any other chemical in the periodic table. In other words, fluorine, the molecule, has affinity to bind with other types of substances. And if you know about the, the term antioxidant, where you have molecules in the body that are sort of rusting out your cells, fluorine is one of those types of molecules. Being so electronegative, it binds with everything and it actually destroys other types of molecules. So the least amount of fluoride you have in your body over time, the better. If you want to have fluoride on your teeth, that's between you and your dentist, something you should have a discussion with. 
But in my opinion, and based on the research from Harvard University, it's probably not a good idea to be ingesting fluoride in your drinking water, whether it's bottled water or whether it's from your tap. All right, let's go to the MSDS. What does the MSDS say about fluorine? And it's a big one. Potential acute effects, hazardous in case of skin contact. It's an irritant. It's an eye irritant in case of injection, uh, ingestion or inhalation. Slightly hazardous in case of skin contact because it's corrosive. Uh, severe overexposure can result in death. Fluoride is a pretty dangerous chemical. The potential chronic health effects, it is a class A4 carcinogen. Um, certain types of animal uh, studies, it's not classified. But the mutagenic or the cancer, uh, long-term cancer effects uh, for mammalian somatic cells, um, it has teratogenic effects that may not be available. That means that they've tried to study the effects of fluoride in the fetus, and at this point, they, they're not putting anything down on the MSDS. But they do say developmental toxicity, not available in certain studies. Uh, the substance may be toxic to kidneys, lungs, and the nervous system, the heart, the gastrointestinal system, the cardiovascular system, bones, and teeth. So taking fluoride internally is actually counterproductive for bones and teeth because your dentist is going to say that fluoride helps strengthen bones. Here with the MSDS, it actually says that taking it internally actually has deleterious or poor effects on bone and teeth health. Repeated and prolonged exposure to this substance can produce uh, target organ damage. Repeated exposure to highly toxic material may produce general deterioration of health by accumulation in one or more of your organs. So again, I'm going to say with fluoride, it's probably the worst chemical that's on our sheet tonight. All right, let's get away from that. Let's look at DDT. Now, I know what you're also saying. Well, wait a minute. Wasn't DDT banned in the United States in the early 1960s or the late 1960s? It was in terms of chemical spraying of food. But DDT is actually found in certain types of, of uh, other products, and it's still being used in other countries around the world. Well, number eight here, we have chloropyrifos and DDT. These are both pesticides and they're linked to structural abnormalities of the brain and neurodevelopment uh, problems that can persist even in as early as age seven. So these pesticides are banned in many parts of the world, but they've been recent, recently linked to Alzheimer's disease as well as neurological uh, disorders. So let's look at the MSDS for both of these uh, pesticides. The, the either it's, it's in a white crystal solid um, or in odor, it, is harmful if it's swallowed. It causes skin and eye irritation, it may affect the nervous system. Um, use only with adequate ventilation. So if you're using a pesticide outside, make sure the air is ventilated. You probably want to be using a respiration mask. Uh, it may cause cough, nosebleed, paleness, sweating, tearing, drooling, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, involuntary defecation or urination, difficulty speaking, chest pain, difficulty breathing, headaches, weakness, dizziness, and lots of other different types of disorders. Um, it has long-term effects. Uh, speech disorders, drowsiness, disorientation, sleepiness, and loss of memory may occur with chronic pesticide exposure. So, looking at things like DDT. Um, DDT in the United States used to be used in uh, community swimming pools. It used to be used in schools. It used to be sprayed during lunchtime because they thought DDT was something that would get rid of other types of things. Um, well, we're finding out that DDT uh, was the origin for Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring, that really ushered in the environmental movement. So just the pesticide DDT alone, although it's not used much in the United States, probably has done more to kind of spur on the environmental movement as opposed to any other of the um, toxins on our list. Because looking back at fluoride, it's still being used in about 50% of the, of the community water supplies in the United States. All right, well, let's look at number nine. Number nine is tetrachloroethylene, and it's a solvent. And this solvent used over time has been linked to hyperactivity and aggressive behavior. Uh, increased risk for psychiatric diagnoses. Mothers exposed uh, in certain roles like nurse, chemist, or cleaners, hairdressers, uh, they have very high levels of exposure to, I'm going to call it TLE. TLE, which is uh, tetrachlorine ethylene. It's also known as the dry cleaning solution. So it's widely used to wash clothes and it's used as a spot reducer. 
uh, its effects on the body are not so clean. The International Agency for Research on Cancer has shown um, that tetrachloroethylene uh, has shown to be a carcinogen and a soil contaminant, meaning that uh, further contaminates the water and natural cycle. So what is the MSDS on, on tetrachloroethylene? Uh, potential acute effects, hazardous to skin, uh, eye irritant, uh, and if you ingest it, it has carcinogenic effects. It's actually classified as an A3 uh, carcinogen. Uh, it has mutagenic effects, bacteria and yeast, and um, uh, may have an effect on the central nervous system. So repeated and prolonged exposure to this substance can produce target organ damage. Now that's kind of a, something that's repeated in the MSDS for a number of these toxins is, you know, uh, target organ, da organ damage. So it may be the kidneys, it may be the uh, intestines, it may be the cardiovascular system. So in general, we can see that, that a prolonged exposure to a number of these uh, toxins uh, may have issues with uh, ADHD. So number 10, the last one is uh, prominated diphenyl ethers, or PBDEs. Uh, these are flame retardants. Remember I, when, I, again, back in the 60s and 70s, they used to make the, the infant clothes with the um, flame retardants because some children were burned in their crib. So this has been linked to neurological development disorders in children. So this is something that is passed into the skin through uh, wearing of clothing. The MSDS on uh, PBDEs, um, uh, studies on animals and humans have shown that some of these uh, act as endocrine tissue disruptors. That means they act on both testosterone and uh, estrogens and progesterones in children and also in adults. And uh, they can deposit themselves in human fat tissue. Uh, a recent study has indicated that OctaBDT is a potential teratogen and prenatal development toxin. So uh, PDBEs, which are not so much ingested, but they're worn as clothing, uh, may have effects long term in terms of their cancer. So the Lancet Neurology, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have uh, the, the camera on these um, links here if you want to take a look at some of them. Uh, living Traditionally, uh, ScienceLab.com, uh, I've got a couple of them there. So in, clothing, in closing, I'd like to say that uh, you know, we've got a listing of 10 toxins here that are in the environment, um, some of them higher levels than others, but children that are exposed to these things are getting bombarded neurologically uh, in the brain and central nervous system to the point where it's hard to think, it's hard to remember, uh, it's hard to do lots of things. And we do know that ADHD and especially autism are neurological disorders. So take heart, uh, if, if you want a uh, copy of this um, slideshow presentation, email me at edirac at medhealthfit.com and let's start a discussion on this. Uh, maybe you've got some of these chemicals in your home and you don't even know it. So hopefully I'll spur you on to look under your kitchen sink and see if you have any of these things. So this is Eric Dirac for this edition of medhealthfit.com. Thanks for listening and we'll see you soon.